Hey everybody, welcome back once again to Gaijin Gaiden. And this time I want to talk to you about uh, one of the great never-ending battles of living in Japan, and that's learning Japanese. Now, when I say never-ending battle, I don't mean that in a negative way. If you go and you live in another country and the people there speak a different language than what you grew up with, then I personally think that it's kind of on you to learn that language. Um, I mean, uh, I lived in Korea for three years, and one of my great regrets there is that my Korean never got to be terribly good uh, for various reasons. Um, of course, maybe not, not studying so much on my part, being a big part of it, um, but uh, there were some other extenuating circumstances. Uh, one of these days I should probably tell you the story about how I uh, signed up to take Korean lessons from some people who turned out to be members of a cult. And that's, uh, that's, that's a real story that really did happen to me. Uh, but I think that's a story for another day. But uh, getting back on topic, yeah, I mean, if uh, living here in Japan, um, trying to learn Japanese, yeah, I mean, that's something that you're continuously going to have to work on. I've met foreigners who have been here for years and they still try to set aside a little time, you know, every day or a couple of times a week to spend some time studying Japanese because, you know, this is a completely different language. And these are people here who basically kind of said, like, I'm, I'm here for a pretty long haul. It, uh, it makes sense for me to try and be as fluent in the language as possible. And I have come across people who are rem astonishingly fluent in Japanese. I mean, like fluent, fluent. Um, <clears throat> that they can do like stuff, work with the government and things like that. And I mean, of course, this isn't really shocking. I mean, there are people who do who can do that in any number of languages all over the world. Uh, it's just when you're so far away from that goal, it seems monolithic and almost impossible. But, you know, that's the thing. It's, um, it's just a case of study and practice. I mean, it's just like exactly like what uh, Dr. Strange said in Dr. Strange. How did you become a doctor? Study and practice. Um, when you're in this situation living here in Japan, it's uh, pretty amazing one thing that uh, just how much uh, you can ac accumulate in terms of study materials. I mean, just I'll show you. Uh, these are actually some flashcards I brought with me all the way from uh, from America. I found them at a store there, and uh, they, I thought they were really handy and just sort of something I could, you know, t you know just sort of flip through when I had some idle time. Uh, honestly, I don't really use these very very much, uh, just because I'm kind of always worried I'm going to accidentally bend a card, and I'm one of those people that like if something like this gets damaged, it just never stops grading on me. Um, and then of course you end up accumulating a great deal of books and things like that. I I just did a quick count. I currently have like six different books for learning Japanese. Uh, some of them are are, are better than others. Um, I've got one book. It's written in Japanese, English, Chinese, and Vietnamese. And you know, for um, different students. Uh, who are learning Japanese, you know, it's kind of nice to have, uh, <clears throat> of course you want the Japanese there so you can kind of check uh, your understanding and whatnot, uh, but it makes the book incredibly busy and it's really just kind of a strain on your eyes, just constantly having to sort of look around and search for it. Now, um, in all fairness, uh, books in like Chinese for learning Japanese and books in Vietnamese for learning Japanese are probably a great deal harder to come by than books in English on learning Japanese. I frequently go to uh, Tsutaya, which is kind of a nice uh, chain of bookstores here, and uh, they have a big store where near where I, uh, near not too far from me. And I can go down into that area, and they have like a big section of books that's in English. And then they, near that, they have a whole book section of books in English on learning Japanese and Japanese culture and things like that. So, you know, as, as a native English speaker, I come into this situation with a tremendous advantage. But um, one of the traps uh, with this sort of thing, and it's been observed by people, by language students all over the world, is that, well, this stuff is all great, 
it's very easy to sort of fall into the old trap of like, well, of thinking that, oh yeah, well me buying, you know, study material, that's almost as good as studying or uh, going through books with ye old highlighter. Well, that's the same as studying. And while it's true, um, doing these things can help you study, it's not really quite the same thing as sitting down, uh, going through, and really pounding that stuff in your head. I mean, running a marker over something is significantly easier than writing that kanji you're trying to master 20 or 30 times to really pound it into your head. Now, I can't stand, sit here and proclaim to be some great um, pious example of studying Japanese vigilantly because I, I'm certainly not. Um, I, uh, I, have, I have done more than my fair share of slacking. But uh, with the, the new year approaching, and uh, you know, as we often do at this time of year, um, I've been reflecting and just sort of once again promising myself that I'm going to be more diligent about this. And I am slightly optimistic that I'll be able to do a better job of it because this is something that I've been steadily working on, slowly but surely, studying more regularly for some time now. And I have made some small degree of progress. I basically I've almost all I'm able to do at least something every day, even if it's not for the hugest amount of time. Which you know, if uh, your goal is fluency, is probably not the best uh, best method. But again, a little studying is better than no studying, and every little bit helps. And I've simply decided that instead of thinking like, okay, I'm going to study for like 45 minutes every day as a goal, which probably is perhaps a little bit unrealistic, uh, I've decided to make my goal in terms of studying Japanese for uh, 2018, instead of looking at it as something that I need to do to you know, fit in here, to have be able to have more a better social life to improve my career prospects and all of and just the fact that I genuinely do enjoy the Japanese language I've decided to try and think of it more as as a challenge um, I was recently watching this TED talk and it was talking about um, uh, like the health of women dealing with uh, ch children with like serious chronic illnesses and the toll that you know being a mom of kids like that takes on these women's health. And uh, the, the scientist who is in, kind of in charge of the study, she said something really interesting. And that uh, after all these several years of studying these ladies, they discovered that uh, the women who viewed their situation as a challenge ha were doing much, much better in terms of health in than the women who sort of found their uh, understandably extremely difficult circumstances as you know as you know a weight and you know even if it is something that I do enjoy and even if it is something that uh, I know will help me in the long run in multitude of ways you know studying is not always fun you know it's it's genuinely hard work it's like the old saying I believe that comes from Socrates um, the the roots of knowledge are bitter but the fruit is sweet yeah I mean you do have to spend that time with your head in a book doing flashcards writing kanji over and over again and even in if no matter how much you love Japan how much you love Japanese the Japanese language you know after a while that kinda does feel a little bit like a grind and uh, I don't know about you but I get to thinking it's like oh man I'd really like to just kind of knock off and go read that book I've been enjoying that I that's really cool or oh man I haven't played uh, I haven't played that video game that I got the other day uh, for like uh, you know like a week you know so that's kind of where I'm at is just sort of really try and see that as as more of a challenge and I think that if I could really kind of really lock that in as my mentality rather than it's like okay time to do this uh, I, I know, you know, it's sort of like taking medicine, you know, it's something you know you have to do for your own good, but, you know, it's uh, sometimes literally a bitter pill to swallow. 
So I suppose that would be my my advice to you when it when it comes to studying Japanese is do try to get yourself into that mentality that think of thinking of it as a challenge of thinking of it as a game and hopefully I th that will sort of take a little bitterness out of what is unquestionably a difficult and not always fun undertaking but if uh, as I said you're looking to stay here for the long haul and uh, I just uh, keep hearing news from back in the US that makes me think that uh, I'm not going to be going back there anytime soon uh, and this I think is something that is is a, is a good way to go so uh, with that said guys I'm going to call it here uh, as always please comment rate and subscribe of course you can join me on Twitter at Gaijin Gaiden and also join me on Tumblr at Gaijin Gaiden until next time take care and have a good one